Hey guys! Thank you so much for tuning into our last video all about our plans for the renovation. Since then, so much has been happening on site. We're moving ahead so quickly, which is so great to see. As most of you probably know, I'm pregnant, so this is all coming at a when it rains, it pours kind of timing for us, but we're making it work. <laughs> You'll remember that the first thing we did was to lift the house. By lifting the house, we freed up so much space underneath to do so many fun things. Initially, it was just a pile of dirt, but pretty quickly it was transformed into a real life studio with the help of a cement slab. Look at the slab! It's all happening. We're debating whether to put down some new wooden floors, but I kind of think we're just gonna seal it off. What are these pipes for, Ben? Will they go? Laundry. Ah, laundry, bathroom, whatnot. It's nice, I like. Upstairs, it was all about extending the house and creating a really beautiful and functional living space. First, the framing for the new back section was put on. Sadly, we had to take out one of the original walls in order to open up that big living space. But luckily, that was pretty much the only original feature that we had to sacrifice for the design that we created. It was so fun at that stage to see everything coming along and also have Ben explain to me all the different rooms and details that he'd designed. Next step, the roof went on starting with the framing. I was particularly excited to see all the windows going in because you'll probably remember how dark and dingy the house was before. Ben's new design incorporated so many skylights, windows, and other ways to get natural light into the house. Once that original wall was removed from the back, the builder started framing up all the new walls within the house. At this point, you could see all the spaces coming along and it was really, really exciting. We did this for upstairs and downstairs at the same time. So I'm here on site and they've just done all the stud work so the space is kind of starting to take shape. They've done the rough-in for the electrical and they're just about to do the rough-in for the plumbing in the bathroom. And the front stairs went on so we no longer had to climb up a ladder to get upstairs. Is it bad that my favourite part of the house is that cactus Someone that I have cactus. like no control over? <laughs> hmm. That's cool. This is the living space and it's really coming together. What I really want to for this design was for there to be a really big living space. So we've connected the outdoor patio area, the kitchen dining and the lounge into one big room so that it, it makes the house feel a lot bigger. As part of all the wall framing that was happening, the electrics went in as well. So we're back on site again and a lot's actually happening. Basically the walls are going to be next and after that point it'll be basically fitting out the whole house. As all of this has been going on, we've been super busy sourcing for the house. One element of that sourcing has been antique shopping, which is pretty much my favourite thing to do. Ben and I always wanted to integrate lots of antique details into the house. We pretty much love old stuff but it was also a way to reflect the original heritage of the house. I think by mixing old and new, you can do a really good job of making a house feel cosy and lived in, even when part of it is completely new. Ben found a table that he absolutely fell in love with. He couldn't leave it behind. So we've pretty much designed the whole kitchen around it. So we've come to this amazing antique shop in Brisbane and Ben has found exactly what he wants. Ben, who's usually so reasonable, has fallen in love with a table. Do you want to take the table out the back and get it pregnant? Get pregnant. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Exactly. And it will match the colour of the floors. You know, we could put the other one downstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in addition to the fun of antique shopping, we've also been sourcing for lots of other things for the house. Pretty much all you do when you're renovating is go to hardware stores, go to Bunnings, go to the paint shop on repeat for like a month. <laughs> Walking the hours of Bunnings, possibly my favourite thing to do on a weekend. And now we're in the bathroom department. Here's all the different bench types. This, see, this is the one that I thought was. Oh no no. They do have stone. That's not bad. No, it's nice actually. So I'm really excited, guys, because our tiles have arrived. Ah! So excited. I found it really difficult to choose tiles because there are just so many options out there. So in the end, we went for a really simple style of tile, <laughs> but 
that gave us a lot of flexibility and a lot of um, adaptability when they arrived. You can see here that we went for a really simple like textured subway tile which is basically a rectangular tile shape. Um, we got that for all the bathrooms on the walls. So one of the reasons we went with a really simple rectangular tile was because there are so many options when it comes to the pattern that you can do. Ben and I have put together a few ideas for the patterns here. It's really fun to have a play around and to be able to decide and have a bit of flexibility for when the product arrives, which is really good. Then we got creative choosing taps, metal fittings, doorknobs, and all the other little details that makes a house feel really nice to be. Guys, <laughs> I feel like you know you're old when a brass bath spout excites you. I think I've got a bit of a preference for a really simple style um, that goes back to kind of a more classic look um, with a really clean line palette. So that's what I'm thinking right now, but I do tend to change my mind all the time. <laughs> we had a bit of a focus on keeping the cost down whilst also creating something that was unique and unusual. So I'm looking forward to sharing a few tips and tricks about that in my next video. Choosing paints turned out to be pretty serious business. We made sure to test all the paints thoroughly by painting swatches onto the walls and seeing them in different lights. We also tested out the colors that we would be hand painting our kitchen cupboards. Ooh, wow. I feel like they change a lot once they dry. Looks really orange, doesn't it? Yeah. What are you thinking, Ben? I'm hungry. He's hungry. <laughs> okay, so warm white, rust, and plantation. We're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to come back because I'm not quite sure. Back on site, the builders were finishing up the walls using matching tongue and groove panels for the upstairs and simple flat panels for the downstairs. Welcome! A lot has happened here, so I'm going to show you around. So this is going to be the living area. You can see they have laid the floors and they have built the balcony, which is amazing. Bedrooms are coming along. Yes, and the closet. Very, very excited. Ensuite bathroom. Looking nice. Ish. <laughs> the cabinetry was the next thing to go in. First, the inner cabinets were added, to which the doors would be attached later on. Ben did a really good job of designing the cabinetry so it felt really bespoke and built in but was really just simple off the rack pieces. We'll be sharing more on that later. At the same time, the plumber was working hard to rough in all the bathrooms, meaning he was laying out the pipework in the back of the walls that would attach to all the hardware. Getting this step right is really important because there's nothing worse than if your rough in doesn't match your fittings. The final step in the process is all the finishes, the paint, the lighting and the floors. Looking around, I love all the little details, the windows and doorways especially. I'm super excited because some of the spaces are actually finished. Right now, my favorite spot in the house is the back veranda. It's so, so beautiful. I can imagine spending a lot of time here. Stay tuned for the next video, guys, when I share a few tips and tricks and also a few little reveals. Thanks for watching.